The Irish Wolf and Heart Disease Research Project started when I was a lecturer at the Royal Veterinary College in the 1980s. It's been running for 30 years and during that time we've examined well over 2,000 wolfhounds and uh, the reason why I became interested in it to begin with was that I was approached by a concerned breeder who was worried about the number of wolfhounds that were dying of heart disease uh, or dropping dead suddenly. We started by going along to dog shows and listening to Irish wolfhounds and were quite surprised at the number of dogs, even healthy dogs at shows, that showed abnormalities. And uh, we soon realised that many of these dogs had rhythm abnormalities and uh, we took along an ECG machine. In the early 90s, uh, we also decided that if we were going to examine them properly, we needed to uh, use an ultrasound machine. And ever since 1993, when uh, the Irish uh, Wolfhound clubs um, purchased a second-hand ultrasound machine for the project, we have uh, done a complete heart examination on every dog that's presented to us, not including um, chest x-rays because that would be impossible, but um, a so-called auscultation, in other words, listening to them with a stethoscope, an ECG and um, an ultrasound. And we use the ultrasound to make measurements of their hearts. After all these years, we have a pretty good idea of what a normal wolfhound looks like on ultrasound and all the variety of abnormalities that they present with on ECG. And we can then uh, give the owners a certificate. Um, these certificates are produced by the Veterinary Cardiovascular Society for heart testing. Uh, and we can uh, reassure them that their dog is healthy and send them back to their veterinary surgeon if we do find an abnormality. Um, the more severe abnormalities, uh, we direct them to ask their veterinary surgeon for a referral to a veterinary cardiologist, someone who has a, spe a specialised qualification in um, looking at dogs' hearts. And they can then offer... Uh, treatment if the dog needs it. The breeding aspect is perhaps secondary to the relationship we have with the individual owner. Um, each examination is done for the benefit of the owner and their own particular dog, but very often we are asked to uh, look at breeding stock. And it's certainly true that over the years when we've analysed the data, that it appears uh, heart disease in wolfhounds is to a certain extent inherited. Therefore, we took the decision that we would suggest, or we can't uh, insist of course, but we would suggest that dogs that were badly affected should not be used for breeding. Um, this is also bad for the dog itself. Um, a bitch with heart disease is not ideally uh, placed to um, have a pregnancy and lactation um, but at the same time it may we hope one day um, help to prevent too many wolfhounds being affected by heart disease. The difficulty is that uh, in the UK unlike in Germany and um, various other countries we do not have um, the right to say to an owner that they cannot breed from a dog without heart testing it. Um, and of course it's up to every individual breeder whether they do this or not. It is however strongly recommended by the breed clubs that they should. Um, we're often asked how often should this be carried out and uh, we've come to the conclusion that really if you want to look after your dog's health it should be done every year from the age of about 18 months for as long as the dog lives. The reason for this is that wolfhound heart disease is um, not a congenital disease. We believe it's not something that they're born with. It's an acquired disease, something that they develop with age. The peak age of onset of heart disease in males is around four and a half years old. 
and in females a bit later, five and a half to six years old probably. And therefore, um, it is important to continue to heart test them uh, throughout their lives because um, you can uh, get it coming on later than that. We've also seen some very young dogs with heart disease and that is the most worrying and tragic part of it, um, even as young as two years old. So that's why we suggest 18 months upwards. It's slightly commoner in males than females, um, but we do get many females affected with it. We do not, though, um, as I say, insist on it um, being acted upon. It is up to the individual owner whether they do or not. But on the heart test form, uh, we have three categories, uh, normal, abnormal and equivocal. Now, many owners hate the term equivocal, but it simply means that we found some minor abnormalities which may or may not be permanent uh, and uh, therefore suggest that they're re-examined. A sort of traffic light system, if you like. Um, we have not found any other definite cause of heart disease. It would be lovely if we could find some cause which we could um, suggest a treatment that would stop the progression of it. We can't do that. But there's no doubt that uh, veterinary heart treatments have improved over the years and therefore if you do have a dog with a problem um, then um, if you see your veterinary surgeon it's possible there may be drugs to help that dog. And uh, I think that uh, forewarned is forearmed. If you know that there's a problem you can do something about it. There are of course people who would rather not know but unfortunately uh, that doesn't help the dog. So we do recommend heart testing every year and uh, um, we'll be about to show you how those heart tests are carried out. We're going to use this dog here, which is a uh, coming six-year-old bitch, a breeding bitch, and we're going to show the different stages of heart, heart uh, examinations um, that are carried out so that everybody knows what is involved. Okay, well the first stage of the examination is to listen to the dog with a stethoscope and I have my phone here with a clock on it so I can count her heart rate. Um, we listen uh, first of all for any unusual noises uh, which are called murmurs uh, which indicate blood turbulence in the heart, leaking valves and so on and uh, we listen on both sides of the chest and at the entrance to the chest. We also listen for any rhythm abnormalities, which may be abnormal. Dogs' hearts are not completely regular normally. They vary with breathing, but any irregular irregularities are very important. So it's the commonest rhythm abnormality in the Irish Wolfhound is called atrial fibrillation. That affects about 10% of the breed at any one time. And our findings are recorded on the form. The next stage is to do the ultrasound scan. I do this standing. Uh, many people prefer to put the dog on a table. The problem with putting Irish Wolfhounds on a table is their size and weight um, probably breaches health and safety regulations to lift them on a table. And uh, it's, uh, it is possible to do them standing rather as one would do a horse. So um, we're going to do that. We're going to ask uh, Linda to turn the dog round and present me with the right side of the chest. This is a screening test, therefore it's not done in the detail that perhaps um, your dog would have if it was referred to a cardiologist. But what we want to do is to make measurements and these are uh, well known for normal wolfhounds and we see whether there's any variation.
I'm spraying the dog with surgical spirit to damp the coat. Since the ultrasound doesn't pass the air very well. We're then going to put on some gel. And this provides a contact between the probe and the chest wall. So we take a series of measurements and then we decide whether or not these fit with the normal uh, measurements for wolfhounds. And if not, uh, we then may do a little bit more to see what is causing the problem. The third stage is um, an ECG, electrocardiogram, and for this we ask that the dog lies down. Now, not all cardiologists insist on the dog lying down. I prefer to do it lying down because I feel that uh, the resulting ECG trace is better and uh, less prone to artefacts. And it is sometimes difficult if you have a lot of artefacts on an ECG to determine whether there is a problem or not. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to turn Chatty round and see whether she'll lie down for us. Um, this is essential training, in my view, for all wolfhounds. Not all are very keen on the idea, but uh, if they're trained from an early age, you usually don't uh, have any problems. The chat is lying on her left side. Normally we would ask her to lie on her right side, but in actual fact, um, we haven't found any uh, real problems with doing it on this side. As a screening test, we normally only use limb leads. We don't use these extra leads as they tend to be more used in humans. And the limb leads will provide us with all the detail that we need. Again, we use surgical spirit as a method of providing electrical contact seems to work quite well. allow the machine to run for several minutes, as long as the dog will tolerate it, and there's a recording. Taking particular note to see if there are any irregularities. So hopefully that's clarified uh, what we do and why we do it. And I'd also like to add that uh, this really applies to any giant breed dog, such as Great Danes, Newfoundlands, St Bernards. Um, and although they are perhaps not quite so prone to heart disease as Irish wolfhounds, they do suffer from it. And therefore it's uh, ideally, uh, vets would like to see every giant breed dog examined every year.